Hello viewers, welcome to the Editorial Analysis by Drishti IAS. In this section, we regularly take editorials from various newspapers and news portals for a better understanding of the various issues happening in India and around the globe. In this section, we first try to link the editorial with our UPSC syllabus, then we go analytical in order to understand some key points and at last some important concepts. Dear viewers, we truly hope that you like this initiative taken by Drishti IAS and your feedbacks are important for us. So kindly feel free to give your important feedbacks in the comment section. So without any further delay, let's commence our session. Dear viewer, this video is available in Hindi as well. If you wish to watch it, please visit our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS. For your convenience, the link for this video in Hindi has been provided in the description below. Today's editorial is taken from Financial Express published on 21st of October 2020. The title of today's editorial is After losing 21 trillion rupees, it's time to relook the PSU policy. If we try to summarize today's editorial, we can say that PSUs used to account for 22.5% of the Bombay stock exchange market cap when Modi came to power in 2014. Today, this value is down to just 9%. If we try to link today's editorial with our UPSC syllabus, we can link it with GS Paper 3 and primarily with section involving Indian economy and issues relating to planning, mobilization of resources, growth, development and employment, inclusive growth and also issues arising from it and at last government budgeting. Some key points of today's editorial. It is not clear when the government will finally clear the policy on strategic sector for PSUs, in each sector, there will be a maximum of four PSUs that Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman had spoken of in May. But to quote what she said on money, this policy would bring about a directional shift away from the socialist baggages that we have been carrying all the while, some of which are becoming more and more of a burden. Now, in May 2020, the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, she spoke about a policy on the strategic sectors for the PSUs, that is public sector undertaking. And she said that in one given sector, there will be a maximum of four PSUs. She also said that these PSUs, some of which are non-performing and governments for a very long time, they have been carrying these PSUs as an extra baggage and more or less you can say that they at this point of time have become a kind of burden over the government. The finance minister didn't mention any names but for instance Air India ran up losses of 27,255 crore in financial year between 2016 to 2020. It should be noted that in the financial year 2019 the total losses incurred by only in the financial year 2019 the loss incurred by Air India amounted around 8,556 crores. So, it can be seen here. Then, and BSNL MTNL lost rupees 62,725 crore in the same period. Since it is unlikely consumers will suffer much if these two are shut or privatized, it is possible that these are the kind of instances the finance minister is alluding to losses that are becoming more of a burden with each passing day. Now it is quite clear with the case of Air India that it is running in terrible losses. Also the telecom, the government's telecom like the BSNL or the MTNL, they are also running in huge losses. So even if these companies, they are shut down or let's say they are privatized, it would not make any difference over the consumer. Okay. The consumers will not suffer at all if either of the two options, either shutting them down or being privatized because the consumer has already got a lot many options in both these sectors. And that's exactly what the finance minister referring to. These are the kind of losses which actually day by day becoming a burden on government's shoulder. Now students, before we go ahead, it is quite important for us that we should actually understand what are the strategic and the non-strategic sectors. Also, what exactly is the government policy 
and how will it work? Now, an industry is considered strategic if it has large innovative spillovers and if it provides a substantial infrastructure for other firms in the same or related industry. So, industry will be called as strategic only if it has got innovative spillovers. That means definitely some kind of innovations are taking place. Also, they are providing a substantial infrastructure for other firms in the same or you can say the related industry. The government classified CPSE that is Central Public Sector Enterprises as strategic and non-strategic on the basis of the industrial policy. Now industrial policy remember industrial policy is not fixed it keeps on changing from time to time. Now according to the current industrial policy the strategic sector PSUs they are number one arms and ammunition of defense equipment number two defense aircraft and warships number three the atomic energy sector number four Indian railways number five application of radiation whether in agriculture or other fields also it is been likely that sectors like banking insurance defense energy they will also be the part of the strategic sector under the new definition non-strategic sectors will include hotel and tourist services transportation vehicle and equipment industrial and consumer goods trading and marketing and transport and logistics now these sectors will actually amount to the non-strategic sectors now what exactly is the government policy that we are talking about for the PSUs public sector undertakings now government had announced the Art Nirbhar Bharat economic support package in the month of May 2020 like we all know the announcement was made by both Prime Minister as well as the several recommendations or several ideas for this entire proposal was given by the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaramanji. In all other sectors, the government plans to privatize public sector enterprises depending upon the feasibility. Now, the government has decided okay, that they are actually willing to privatize the public sector enterprises. Okay, and it totally depends upon feasibility that what exactly is the requirement, how much percent, how much stake is to be privatized. The number of enterprises in strategic sector will be only one to four to minimize wasteful administrative costs. Now this second decision which they have taken that in one particular strategic sector the number of PSUs will only be between one being the maximum and be one being the minimum and four being the maximum. Now this step is taken because government doesn't want to spend unnecessarily on the administrative costs of the extra PSUs which are present. Others, other than those companies which are not or you can say which are actually not coming under this category, they will be either privatized or they will be merged or brought under a holding company structure. That means the remaining companies which have not made their presence between these minimum one company and four company. So the remaining companies of that particular sector, they either will be privatized or merger will take or they will be sold. Now, possible sector wise categorization. Now there is one categorization. Okay, quite important for us to understand like the Nuclear Power Corporation of India, Anthriksh Corporation and Power Grid will be among these organizations will be totally under state they will be completely state owned companies and they will enjoy their immunity from privatization no privatization will take place in these companies indian railways nhai that is national highway authority of india food corporation of india will also remain completely under government's control so this is one possible sector wise categorization more is yet to come we don't have a complete idea about this so as we have more information will be providing the remaining part as well. Now what exactly is the ongoing process? How, what exactly is going on? So government has already set in motion the privatization plans for large PSU companies. Some of the PSU companies for them the privatization plan has already begun. Companies such as BPCL, 
भारत पेट्रोलियम कॉर्पोरेशन लिमिटेड एयर इंडिया सीसीआई दैट इज द कंटेनर कॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया एंड द शिपिंग कॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया फॉर दीज कंपनीज द प्रपोजल ऑफ प्राइवेटाइजेशन हैज ऑलरेडी बिगिन इन द बजट ऑफ ट्वेंटी द प्लान वर दट गवर्नमेंट डिसाइडेड टू सेल इट्स पार्ट इन एल आई सी दैट वॉट एवर स्टेक अ गवर्नमेंट हैज इन लाइफ इंश्योरेंस कॉर्पोरेशन गवर्नमेंट हैज एक्चुअली डिसाइडेड टू सेल दैट स्टेक ऑल्सो द सेल ऑफ इक्विटी इन द आई डी बी आई दैट इज द इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया हैज ऑल्सो बिगिन एंड दी स्टेक्स विल बी सोल्ड दिस इक्विटी विल बी सोल्ड टू द प्राइवेट रिटेल और इन्वेस्टर्स राइट सो दिस इज वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज द स्ट्रैटेजिक एंड द नॉन स्ट्रैटेजिक सेक्टर इज वॉट इज द गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसी विद रेफरेंस टू द स्ट्रैटेजिक सेक्टर्स वॉट आर द पॉसिबल प्राइवेटाइजेशन प्लान दैट आर गोइंग ऑन सो आई हैव ट्राइड टू गिव यू सम इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट ईच ऑफ दैम हेयर द प्रेजेंट स्टेटस वॉट रियली मैटर्स दो इज वेदर द पॉलिसी विल एक्चुअली बी इंप्लीमेंटेड एंड इफ इट वॉट फॉर्म द स्टेक्स सो वी हैव द पॉलिसी वी हैव द प्रपोजल नाउ वी हैव टू सी द इंप्लीमेंटेशन हाउ एक्चुअली इट इज गोइंग टू बी इंप्लीमेंटेड Air India was to be divested, for instance, long before the strategic sector policy was even thought of. In which case, the policy is not going to result in some path-breaking privatization recommendations. See, Air India. For Air India, a proposal was given by the government that government will sell seventy-six percent stake in Air India. This proposal came in the year twenty eighteen. However, it could not happen properly. okay so we have to focus that how exactly this strategic sector policy will work what would be the proper results that we would receive from such policy initiatives in the case of banks does the new policy mean all but four psu banks will be privatized now like i told the number of psus in start coming in the strategic sector their maximum number will be 4 and minimum number will be 1 so we have to see that in case of the banks what exactly will be the situation whether all the nationalized bank except four banks will be privatized or some other provision is brought for them the government could not even sell idbi that was the only one that it didn't require parliament's nod or will the government get around this by merging all psu banks into these four now here is one case here government of india actually wanted to sell its stake in the idbi bank okay and here is one condition it is given that they could have easily sold their stake in the idbi bank because this entire process would not have required parliament's permission now what exactly is the reason why this deal didn't required parliament's permission that was because now the story was of 2018 2019 lic life insurance corporation of india wanted to purchase 51% stakes in idbi and it was a financial deal and the entire financial deal would have come under the lic act and hence this lic act would not require this legislation would not require any kind of amendment so there was no need to take any permission from the parliament that's the reason it is mentioned here however this selling of idbi to life insurance corporation could not happen it has also been said that what exactly and how exactly the government will do when we are talking about the banks will the government take this initiative that they will merge all the bank or whether these banks these nationalized banks will be sold except four the government has 13 energy companies so since the sector is likely to be considered strategic like we told energy possibly would be a strategic sector does this mean nine psus like bpcl will be sold off or will they be merged or amalgamated with existing ones the farce of ongc buying hpcl for 37000 crore comes to mind immediately same is the case with the energy sector as well there are nine psus like bpcl hpcl etc so how exactly government will take the initiative here now what exactly is the way ahead indeed what matters is how quickly the government takes decision now it entirely the ball is in government's court and it is the government who has to initiate 
in a very fast manner. Having to sell IDBI bank to LIC instead of a top private buyer is definitely a negative. And the government lost a golden opportunity to sell Air India two years ago when it refused to take on all the airlines accumulated debt. Now it is to be noted that here what exactly is the case of the stake of Air India was about to be sold. Now it has been said that in 2018 again government decided to sell its stake in Air India. Now Air India comprises of 146 aircraft out of which 82 are owned by Air India. There are 30,000 employees who are working presently in Air India and like I told you about the losses. So last year the losses of Air India they were 8,556 crores financial year 2019-2020. It has been said that as of now, presently, if it look at the current data, it has been said that a total debt of around 88,781 crores is on Air India. It includes all the liabilities, loans, losses and payments to be made to various vendors. Now, the government is actually saying that out of this 88,781 crore, the acquirer whosoever will purchase this at that point of time the condition was whosoever would purchase he has to take care of 32,447 crore of debt that means it is to be paid by the acquirer and the remaining would be retained by the government that is government will pay the remaining amount however this deal could not happen and today we have results we still have Air India and Air India is suffering from tremendous losses. Equally important, given the rapid decline in the market value of PSU, speed is of the essence in divesting shares in PSUs or even selling them off. Now we can see that there is a rapid decline in the market value of the PSUs. Various PSUs were performing at a very nice position. But if we look at their situation today, we can definitely see that there is something wrong. Now, we have the statement here. When Prime Minister Modi first came to power, the market capitalization of all the PSUs was around 19.4 lakh crore and that equaled 22.5% of all firms on the BSC. Now, in 2014, when Modi ji came into power, at that point of time, the total value of PSUs, it was around 19.4 crores. 19.4 lakh crores however and it actually amounted to 22.5 percent value at the Bombay Stock Exchange however it has reduced down to only 9 percent only 9 percent the market value of all the shares in the BSC they have a new value of around 159.5 lakh crore all the companies who are listed in the Bombay Stock Exchange their value the market cap is around 159.4 lakh crores but on the other hand the value of the PSUs it has fallen down and today the value of the PSU stands at only 14.7 lakh crores which is mere 9.2 percent of the market cap now there are several examples it has been said that the PSUs if they would have grown at a faster pace at today's point of time, with the reference to 2014, their present value could have been 21.1 lakh crore. So, these are the things that actually are a cause of concern for the government. Also, it is to be noted that what exactly could be the reason for this decline in the market cap of these PSUs? You know, there are several reasons. Now, I'll mention a couple of reasons here. Number one, you know, the Indian government, they have taken the accumulated cash reserves whatever these PSUs had in the name of special dividends in order to adjust their own losses in some different sectors some different areas so what government has done government has taken the accumulated cash reserve from these PSUs now these PSUs they don't have money for a proper operation and that's what we are seeing that they are resulting into losses also you know there is no pressure for productivity no pressure there has to be some kind of approach that these PSUs, they have to be productive in nature. But there are many PSUs who are continuously incurring losses because there is no pressure 
in order to have a proper productivity. Also, there are a large number of people who are employed in these PSUs, but they are underutilized. Their utilization is not done properly. Also, the kind of technology which these PSUs are using, most of the PSUs, they are using an outdated technology. And yeah, one more reason you can say the unions which are in these PSUs, they often act as a roadblock for development. So we can see that these are a couple of reasons because of which this situation has come that the market share or the market cap of the PSUs has declined significantly in the Bombay Stock Exchange. We can have a couple of examples like SBI. When Modi came to power, the value was 2.06 lakh crore, but today the value is only 1.82 lakh crore. However, the value of SBI has seen an even higher growth. 2.06 lakh it was in the year 2014. Last year, May 2019, this value rose to 3.05 lakh crore. So the value of the PSUs, they keep falling over time. Similarly, we have a case of ONGC. Its value in 2014 was around 3.49 lakh crore, but today its value is only 87,118 crore. So we have to see that what exactly could be the reasons why these losses are being incurred. Steps, how proper initiatives are to be taken in order to stop such losses. So definitely it is quite true that COVID pandemic has definitely delayed the privatization process, but it should be the first priority of the government to ensure that the PSUs are divested or privatized as soon as possible. Some questions that can be asked with reference to today's editorial. Number one, is it a good idea to privatize even the profit making public sector enterprises? Give reasons in support of your answer. Number two, Indian Railway has always been the lifeline of India's growth story. Analyze the challenges, advantages and disadvantages of its privatization. So these are the today's questions that you can frame from the given editorial. I hope you like today's editorial. Thank you very much.